My love language is efficiency and not just in business, but pretty much in life too. But I can't even go to the grocery store without forgetting everything that we need unless I have a complete list bulleted out of exactly what I need to leave the store with. Otherwise, there's a bajillion percent chance I'll forget it. Shout out to all my fellow organized forgetful people. By the end of this video, you are going to have seen how I set up my company guidebook, Asana or Trello board so you can very quickly set up your very own digital business binder. I've taught more than a thousand creative entrepreneurs how to DIY their brand's message and I always recommend that you have some sort of ground zero that this stuff lives in. You've gotta put it somewhere that it's easily touchable and a dashboard that you can go to again and again in reference. I'm also a serial education junkie, but I do actually get through courses, so I wanna show you how I do that too. Hit like if you are also a proud nerd who loves to learn too, and let's dig in. If you haven't met, my name is Ashlyn Carter. I am a conversion copywriter and brand and launch strategist for creative entrepreneurs like you. Look down below and hit subscribe to join in on the family and get these bite-sized snackable copywriting and business tips to you every single Tuesday. Seriously, I try my hardest to keep them to that 15 minute mark or under, which is really hard because I have a lot of feelings, have a lot of thoughts, but I do it for the people. They're quick tutorials, subscribe so you don't miss them. That said, let's get into this one. So here's the deal. If you've been around here for a while, you will remember that I love Trello. It's for I got started on when it came to the project management side of my business. We moved to Asana about a year and a half ago, and I'll be honest, I don't hate it. The reasoning we moved is because I was becoming less of the project manager for my business. There's other tasks that I needed to do, and so when it came to assigning out projects for people, that wasn't my role anymore. So we needed to move to the platform that this new integrator role liked more. It only made sense to go with what that person enjoys working in. Honestly, I found they're not that different if you can learn one, you can learn the other. It's like any tech tool I say, the best tool is gonna be the one that works for you. So don't just dip your pinky toe in. Go ahead, jump in, get your hair wet, start to figure out the platform and make it work for you, whichever one you pick. I think Trello is a little easier to start with. Asana is a little more robust when it comes to uh, signing dates and getting like really detailed checklists in place. Let me know below as you watch this if you want more Asana and Trello tutorials. I am an open book and would love to share you some of our systems in my business. And let's go ahead and let me flip the screen around so we can go into Asana and Trello and I'll show you what this looks like. All right, here we are inside my Asana platform, Asana, Trello, project management tools that function very similarly. You have played around in the Asana platform and you're, you're like, mine doesn't look like that. I like mine set up in this board type view because I'll click over to this Trello board. This is how I learned this stuff. And so for me, my brain just works like this. You can also put a pretty background in Trello and you can't in Asana, but that's okay. I'm going to show you also real quick before I jump into going through each one of these basic overview of how to get set up. But like I said, I'm not going to focus on that. You can figure out how to use Asana and Trello. They, again, like you click this and add a new card. And then once I'm in here, description, I can add checklists, I can link different files, I can assign it to someone, I can comment back and forth on them. They're so useful. That's how a basic overview of how these kind of things work. Pretty easy. You just kind of like learn, you start to use it, and then you realize the rhythm of it all. So let's go into each one of these because I want to walk through them. So first over here in management, I had so much software all over the place, and I needed some place to say for this Thing, we use this tool, um, so on and so forth, and have the links to all of those. So that's why I have this tech stack list first. It's just nice to have everything all in one place. Again, especially as you grow, it's so helpful for training and onboarding people to be able to tell them, like, here is a list of all the tech we use and what it is used for. I'm not going to click open the financial info, but I've been filling out all these PPP loans and stuff lately, and I'm constantly having to reference to get my EIN, other financial information, having it all linked quickly on this card is so helpful. So I can log into different programs, find email addresses quickly for people on my bookkeeping team, my financial advisor really quickly. Having that in one card is incredible. Same with the legal stuff, links to my attorney, my attorney's phone number, just anything like that, as well as uh, any of the filing information that you get when you register your business or trademark information you've registered. I keep all that on one card too. HR info, I'm gonna be honest, it's not really built out, so I'll show it to you. We have a folder where we do have some 
some things for people when we onboard them in my business. There's that. Supplies and ordering was so helpful uh, when I did the calligraphy side of my business. So I'll open this so you can see a little bit. If you do a lot of ordering and have a lot of different vendors or things that you need, I would recommend something like this. It was just really nice to be able to say, this is where we go for these different tasks. I also used to have a list. Again, this is when I needed a lot more overhead in my business and I would keep a checklist over here. So if there was something I was like, we need more of this kind of paper in the office for printing, or we need more of this kind of calligraphy ink to fill orders, then I would put the supplies list on here. And then like once a month, I would put in an order for everything. So brand materials, and I'm going to go over brand messaging specifically in a minute, but brand materials, just keeping a home base for basic contact information that I need. I, again, I'll talk about this in just a moment, but our visual style guides connected here on my Google voice number and our mailing address for the business. Products and offerings, keeping a tight list of what you do. I have found that is very helpful. And then these last few are pretty self-explanatory, but all the hex codes, I constantly am copy and pasting these because I don't have them all memorized. So that's helpful. Um, typography and a link to download all of our fonts, just keeping this all in one place. So like I said, I'm going to go through this a little bit more in a moment. I like color coding everything. So I have what those color codes mean here. I am always needing a place to reference an affiliate link that we have. If somebody gives us an affiliate link or I have discount code, I keep them all right here. So I can quickly find those. I'm going to talk about courses in a moment. And then I like to have all of my team information in here as well. I'm going to jump over to the Trello one because there's a few other things that I used to include that were a little bit different. Um, moving over here. So process templates, all of our workflows, having them on one board was helpful as well. Here, this would be an example of how you could fill out a blog workflow. I want to also be clear that I don't keep workflows any longer in the company guidebook. There were so many now that it's moved over and it has its own board right here. So we have all the different workflows for different things. Again, I want to be clear that like make this your own thing. This has is a living and breathing, the company guidebook, a living and breathing document. So it has changed and morphed so much from when I first started my business. I didn't need all of these at first, but now I do. So Back over on this one, a couple of other things that I like to add, these testimonials. So again, now I keep testimonials in my Google Drive and I organize them over there. But at first when I didn't have a ton, um, like I've got thousands of students now and we've had hundreds of customers or clients. So um, I just didn't, I didn't have a lot that I needed. When I would get a good testimonial, I could copy and paste it in here. If it was a screenshot, I could just screenshot it and upload it here. That was immensely helpful when it came to turning around and selling my products and services and being able to turn to a pool of data and people that had gotten results that I could turn around and share. If you are rearing to go with this and you like it, then look down below. You can grab a free Trello starter board for this company guidebook. And yes, even if you want to use Asana, don't worry, you can still download it, pull it up as like a template and then set yours up in Asana. Next up, the messaging section. Okay, you know your brand isn't your logo. You probably though got your mood board, your color palette that you want to work in, some idea of the imagery elements that you want to use. But how much meat and actual tangible documentation of your brand beyond anything visual do you have in your business? I have found so many creatives that can't tell me what they do in a nutshell or give me a quick snapshot of what their brand sounds like. And I am on a mission to end that. I also wanna say, even if you figure this out for other people and you work in marketing and you still have a hard time with this, that's okay. It is the hardest to figure this out for ourselves. I have a client named Emma one time and she put it so well. She said, Ashlyn, it's like, I've done the back of my hair and I can't quite see it, but you can get back there and see it. Sometimes getting somebody else's help on this, which I'm gonna tell you about in a minute, can be really, really helpful. That said, I wanna help you see the proverbial back of your business's hair and get your brand messaging down pat. I mentioned it in a recent video, but we don't start any brand story client in my business without doing first a deep dive excavation into their brand messaging, what they sound like, what their clients and their customers are saying about them, so on and so forth. This is the same system I teach inside copywriting for creatives, but you have to strip things down to that demo day, chip Waco style first, down to the studs before you can build anything on top of that. Now I can't help you figure out all of that here today in this quick video. It takes me about three modules inside copywriting for creatives, but I can show you in this video exactly what it looks like all packed in to one place where it's all neatly organized. Let's zoom into that part of this company guidebook. So the brand messaging side of things. Now I have all these beautiful, gorgeous visuals, links to all of our imagery files set up over here. That is not my brand. <laughs> that is how my brand is pulled out and visually on display for people. But 
my brand is so much more underneath that. And that's why this part is so important to me and why I'm like obsessed with making sure people understand and have this down, right? Let me take you through all of these. I will show you this brand messaging style guide. This is the kind of thing that I teach people how to make inside CFC. We make them for our clients that are in brand story. Up, up here, this 101 tab is more the highlights. Gonna get you to that brand messaging style guide, the link to that copy bank for the copy banking stuff that I teach. But some big overarching ideas that I wanna keep in mind, especially as the one who's writing a lot. So I would say that part is probably most helpful for me, but as far as um, casting a vision and setting it and helping people understand, the rest of the cards are going to be more helpful for that. So I have our mission down. Anytime anybody asks me about why I have that right here, I can pull it, copy and paste it. I teach about only this factors a lot because if you can't tell me why you do what you do, the way you do it differently or better than somebody else, we have a problem. This is my card and this is why I know I'm different. So all of my students that I teach, there's my onlyness fact. You guys have asked, I've said it verbally, but there it is written down so you can see that. Core values, these are my business's core values. I like to keep those here and in place. All the links to um, surveys that I run, that kind of thing, I'm gonna link them all under here, as well as some like metrics that I wanna hit. The vision statement and elevator pitch, this is what I wanna show. There's some hot links I was using my fingers, you couldn't see. Hot links for vision statement and elevator pitch, bio, that kind of thing. But that stuff is messaging pulled from my brand messaging style guide. So this is already in here. I've just copied and pasted it into this company guidebook because we use these all the time. Like anytime I'm asked to contribute to something and they say I need your bio, I just come in here, open, click it open highlight, copy, paste it, send it off to where it needs to go. Moving over to that style guide itself that's linked off from the company guidebook, I wanted to show you a couple of other things because I talk about voice all the time, but this is where voice guide stuff lives in my business. So anytime I brought somebody on, but even when it was just me, I had all of this like distilled down into this messaging document. So I still try to have like my personality and just an idea of what our voice tone is like. And then a little bit more deep dive, which is what I wanna show you down here. So some pillars of brand voice, some adjectives that I use to describe it. And a lot of these I've done like some really nerdy, um, studies and stuff. I also worked with another copywriter to help set this up. I, I just mentioned earlier that like, I can't see the back of my hair. I have a hard time doing that for me too. So getting another copywriter to come in and say, okay, this is what I'm seeing. This is how I would describe it when you go on to explain it to other people. That was so helpful. You can pause if you want to like steal any of these words for yourself or anything. Yeah. Some things to keep in mind. So I'm just helping people understand what what I sound like. So again, when I'm writing for myself, I can use this as a North Star, but when I'm letting somebody help answer customer and client questions, I can say, this is what we sound like. Go forth and use it. This part of the company guidebook is key to confidence in my opinion. This is how I don't worry about feeling off in my brand message or that my team is gonna ever feel off because we have a centralized place to go to so we know what my brand sounds like. If you're gonna take the leap and get in on this, then I have a free swipe file of words that can already get you started fleshing out any sort of messaging style guide you wanna use. Head over to ashlynwrites.com quiz and you can get started. You'll go through and it will sort you into one of four different brand archetypes based on your thinking and your buying patterns and styles. Then you're gonna get a list of words that you can literally copy and paste right into your brand messaging style guide like the words you saw in mine. And lastly, the education section. You know that classic breakup line, it's not you, it's me. Sometimes I feel like education is like that. Sometimes we have to remember if we're constantly buying books and memberships and courses and programs, but we're not actually implementing them, maybe it's not the educator or the format's fault, but it's a you problem. It's a me problem that I need to work on. But the good news is that is a completely fixable problem. So I love education. I also love implementing education. Between courses and masterminds over the course of about four years in business, I have probably spent around $75,000 was a quick scratch on paper. If you add it in going to conferences, like flying in hotels, it probably hit closer to six figures. But like I said, this stuff matters. I have to do it. And I, I would not do business if I couldn't invest in this kind of thing. I just wouldn't. Because there's no such thing as continuing education when you're an entrepreneur apart from you designing it for yourself. 
There's no staff-wide lunch and learns like I used to love when I was in corporate and agency life. There's no mandatory ongoing training. You're the one that has to set this up. In the last video I did, I talked about how I make time in my schedule to actually jump through and implement some of these things. I'll link that up here and down below in the description box. The last part that I wanna show you is this courses and education column. From when I started my business to now, from one person to a person with contractors and some employees, this has not changed. I have always kept this because I need some place to have every course I've ever taken and that's what I want to show you. Um, I also obviously since I'm a launch copywriter I have so many courses programs memberships to move through for that client project and a lot of times they ask us to come back and so having like a login I've just if you are a part of these for your clients I have found it's helpful instead of asking them every time hey can you set me up a new login like I need to get in and see the product so I can write the copy for it. I've just found it's nicer to keep like from, if they tell you that information once file it so you always have it. This is where I have every single like what there's so many now the minute I join a new program which I did two times within the last month this is what I do step one I jump over to my blueprint spending plan and make sure that if this number does not fit in the education budget and it throws it off then the first thing I need to do is add it in as a separate line and I'm gonna gamify and figure out how I'm gonna make that investment back so if that is not currently included in my budget and it's outside of my budget then I've now, got to come up with a sales plan of adjusting my numbers or taking on a new little project or something that's going to help make that back. I tell my students that, I tell anybody that's considering education, it's not a risk if you've already figured out and gamified how you're going to make that investment back. Next, as soon as I get the login information in my inbox, I log in immediately, but I also start a folder in Gmail where I'm going to file all my emails that come in for that program. Once I've logged in, I'm going to set up a new package password. I like to use LastPass just because they are more secure passwords that I can generate. Like I said, I used to set these up or just copy and paste my password and username inside Trello. Once I grew my business, I realized that's probably not the safest and so I don't do that anymore. Then I move over to Asana and add in a little card for that program specifically. So let me show you what that looks like. What it looks like on the inside, I do like to um, mark them with my color coding system ultra nerd but like let's see how i want to show you how i like make sure that i get through it so i'm going to open up this one um this is a like a mom entrepreneur that teaches organizing and i this is a personal course that i bought i just wanted to get inside and um, set us up on a system to clean out my house and just yeah so this is completely non-business related and i still put those kind of courses in here too. Now the username and the password I used to put on here as well. Um, I've moved away from that. I now use LastPass to store everything and I set up a secure one of those weird passwords for everything. So I don't do that anymore. I just include the link, but let me open up this and show you. So inside this, you'll see, and I finished them all, all the different modules that she had. And then I checked them off when I got through them. You could get really aggressive and it would probably be great for really some courses and set yourself up some dates to have them do by. That I don't do. I just wanted to make sure that I finished it. So I checked them off little by little. Um, I have not given into, let's see, she has this super mom vault. And so I, again, I put that here just to remind myself that she does have that part of the program too, that I think it was a bonus I was given access to. So just to I don't know, we buy so many things and our inboxes fill up and I'm never gonna find that, so I need to set it up somewhere else. Finally, if this is a course that I'm working through right now and I need it at my fingertips, which is usually the ones that I'm currently working through, I will um, make a little link and add it to this Chrome folder tab where I can keep links to all of those. So I have my learning set up and I can very quickly access all those. I don't have to jump through all these hoops just to get into the platform and go to the next lesson that I haven't completed. I don't take notes digitally. I like to take them by hand and actually write things out. So I just take notes on like three hole punch paper. I put them into um, jewel tone, pretty manila envelopes and file them. I definitely love school supplies though. So some things I've done to motivate myself to get into the course and actually take it. Um, I've bought a new pin before, like a fancy pin or a nice um, set of little like Crayola markers from the grocery store and I'll use that to take my notes. I've also done things like buy candles too that I only liked during my education time. I just have to, I realize I'm sounding like a dog, but I have to set up little reward systems for myself to finish education. Shout out to Maggie recently who dropped in this awesome note about all the work that she's doing and she upped her SEO by 200%. Congrats, Maggie, I'm so proud of you. Thank you guys for always letting me know how these videos are helping you out. Now you know all about how to create a company guidebook for your creative small business, but how do you make sure that you're organizing your time well so you're actually completing this work and writing all the content that you need?
need to? Well, I've got a video teed up for you next where I walk through four strategies I've implemented recently to create more revenue in my business. I'll link that. Thanks again for watching.